Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, here in uh, Porto, in northern Portugal. We'll just wait for everybody to jump on the stream. It tends to only let about 100 people in every 10 seconds or so. We'll just wait for everybody to get in here. And then we'll get this started talking about this latest bank failure. And uh, yeah, just let me know you can all hear me okay. That would be appreciated. Okay, and I'll do my best for a walk and talk uh, tomorrow around this place, which is absolutely one of the most beautiful places I've uh, I've definitely been for a long time. So we'll see uh, if I can do this any justice tomorrow. But let's get started then. And what I would like to do is, is really talk about, I don't want to focus the video on the latest bank collapse. I'm going to tell you about it, latest bank failure. But really what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, USA, UK, European Union and Canada. So that pretty much covers most of my subscribers. And I want to look at these things from a historical perspective. And we've got one chart as well that I want to show you. And hopefully this will just sort of give you a good indication of where we are right now in this process. Because what I keep hearing from a lot of uh, people, a lot of questions keep coming up and a lot of YouTubers keep talking about this as well, around how all the banks are going to collapse. I keep hearing this uh, day in, day out. All of the banks are going to collapse and it could be tomorrow. I just want to look at it more logically, more rationally and uh, actually show you from a historical perspective and then we can cross-reference a number of things to give us a better idea of where we are as opposed to just everything's going to you know, collapse type thing. Um, that, uh, that's more of an extreme view. So let's get started then. Let's get this loaded on the shared screen here. Just let me know if you can uh, see everything okay as well. Great. So this is from, we're going to begin with the USA then, the FDIC, and then we're going to talk about the bank that has just failed. So this is the fifth one this year. In fact, let me just show you which bank that is first. Uh, and this failed on the third. So just about a week ago now, this was the failure. So Citizens Bank in Iowa. So this isn't a bank that's just failed uh, overnight or anything like that. It failed about a week ago, but it didn't really get any news coverage. So of course we had on the 10th of March. Now for the UK people, the USA do their days and months backwards. <laughs> of course, all the U USA people are going to be saying, no, we don't. No, we don't. But to everyone else around the world, we say day, month, year. But uh, so when you look at these, just bear in mind, this is month, day, year. So of course, this was the 10th of March, the 12th of March, and then the 1st of May was Silicon Valley Signature and First Republic. And then we had the 28th of July was Heartland Tri-State Bank in Kansas. And then just last week was another bank in Iowa, which was Citizens Bank. So we're going to come back to this list because when I went through this, it really blew my mind when I started going through the list. And I think you'll be shocked by it as well. So firstly, let's look at some context things. I think it's important that we put this into context because I'm hearing both scales here. Some people are saying uh, five bank failures, that's nothing compared to what we saw in 2009, 2010, where 140 here in one year, 157 in one year. And people are saying it's nothing in, in context to it. Actually, that's not correct. If you look at it in terms of, and this is why I've pulled up this chart, we have the number of failures and then we have the number of assets. So in green here, this is the number of assets, and in red is the number of failures. People are focusing on the wrong metric. They're focusing on the number of banks. The number of banks is irrelevant. What you want to look at is the assets of those banks. So everyone's focusing on the wrong thing, but I want you to focus on the right thing, and that is this column here, so total assets. So let's look at this then. And we can go back to, we can go back over 20 years here to 2001. 
where we saw, and again, if you're just joining the stream, we're going to cover not just the US, but UK, Europe, and Canada as well. So bear with me, and I'll timestamp this as well for you to make it easy. So 2001, we had four failures, and it was a very small amount in, and again, this is in millions. So it's 2,359. So again, in millions. And then we saw 11, 3, 4, 0, 0. And then 2007 is when this started to kick off as we went into what was known as the Great Recession. So that was three failures, 25 failures, up to 140, 157 at the peak in 2010. We saw 92 in 2011, and then we saw 51 in 2012. And then it sort of carried on but died down. 13, 24, 2014 was 18, 2015 was eight, and then you can see where it died down. So 2018 was actually the best year where we didn't see any. But did you know that in 2019, this is pre-lockdowns and everything else, economic um, problems that we saw, we only saw, we, 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 we actually saw four bank failures. And people don't talk about this, so it's important to give it context. We saw four bank failures when the economy was apparently strong and fine, everything was okay. We saw another four in 2020. We didn't actually see any in 2021, nor did we see any in 2022. Now then, where can we see this? We can go back to 2005, 2006, and we can see a similar pattern here. And then what happened just after this? And again, I'm not saying that we're going to see this, but history does often rhyme as we go through. But the key thing I want you to focus on is this here. And I may need to zoom in for you so you can actually see this. This is total assets for the failures this year. These only five banks, okay? Look at the total assets here. <laughs> this is staggering. You can't, even if I go all the way across and I go to the worst period here in 2008, it doesn't even compare to the asset failures that we saw in the last year. And this is why the FDIC went into a massive panic because they pretty much exhausted their funds. They ran through it. This is 50% higher than when 25 banks failed in 2008. So this is the context that no one's really giving and it's so, so crucial. So let's go on to the FDIC release then. And again, this is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the official um, insurance provider, I think we can call it, of the banks in the USA, which is what, four and a half thousand banks, I believe, at today's count. So this was their press release then, and it talked about how Citizens Bank in Iowa was closed today, obviously this is last week, by the Division of Banking, which appointed the Federal Deposit Corporation as receiver, FDIC. So this was to protect the deposit. They entered into a purchase and assumption agreement with Iowa Trust and Savings Bank to assume all the deposits for Citizens Bank. So key thing to bear in mind here is then is that the people didn't suffer their banks, their, their savings account, everything was purchased by another bank. And it says here, the two branches of Citizens Bank will reopen as branches of Iowa Trust and Savings Bank. So that has occurred now, and there wasn't any major um, situation that occurred from that. And then it states that as of September, so that it, it, this was their latest uh, accounting, I suppose, here. It's saying that Citizens Bank held approximately $66 million in total assets and $59 million in total deposits. So we can probably say from this that it was quite a small bank compared to some of the others. And definitely compared to, if, if you think about, um, what do we have, uh, SVB, we had um, the other banks that failed this year's signature. I think I've got the stats on that. I'm going to see if I can pull them up for you in a moment. But these were some of the largest failures. I think it was like second or third or third and fourth in all of US history, the whole of US history. And these two happened this year, which explains then why the failures were 50% higher in terms of assets than they were in the 2008 crisis. So very, very interesting numbers that we've got here. And what was the reason for it then? I saw a lot of theories around this, but 
what I like to do is wait a few days just to see what comes out. And this actually has come out now. So all those people that rushed the news out on this with all their theories, were com they got it completely wrong because what this came from was bad trucking loans. So trucking companies, large and small, have gone out of business. And they're saying the trucking bloodbath has taken down a bank. Citizens Bank has failed and it appears that the exposure to commercial trucking is the cause. So what was their loan portfolio focused on? Commercial and industrial loans. And they, where was, the, ah, here we go. So bad at trucking industry loans. So again, this is not 100% confirmed, but it's pretty much there from looking at some of the reports and some of the their loan book as to what they loaned on. Saying that they did this examination and the examiners identified significant loan loss that had, and, and this is crucial, this is what you can learn from this as well, that had not previously been identified by the bank. Read that again, <laughs> it's really important. Next thing was that their portfolio was, and I've highlighted this for you, concentrated in out of territory and out of state loans to one single industry. The blog noted that some of these loans had incurred heavy losses. So let's just pause there a moment before we continue on with all of this. Think about that for a moment. You've got this one bank here that was highly concentrated into one industry. That's the trucking industry. The trucking industry's had a lot of problems. So what's happened is their loan book failed. Simple, this is what happens with banks. Now, what have I been warning you about for a while now? And it's interesting that I always get these comments saying, oh, this, what you said hasn't happened yet. And you know, blah, 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 all this all the time. Let me repeat this again, because this is going to happen eventually. No one can predict when this is gonna happen because no one has a crystal ball. What I've said is that all of these other banks are concentrated. They've concentrated all of their their loans into commercial real estate into commercial office space and all of these other all these other things this is already you don't need me to tell you this you can see this in the mainstream media this is already coming down the office space is vacant more and more of them are leaving this is going to and we haven't yet got to the refinancing of these loans yet when the refinancing period comes in, this is gonna be really, really bad. And we're probably gonna see, if not more failures, then definitely a lot of problems. But it's not just these things. It's not just a refinancing on the commercial loans. You also have the fact that their bond books, some of them are down absolutely. I mean, it's catastrophic with some of these banks that yeah, the yields are up, but the asset value is down. So if we have a bank run, and this is why the, the Fed and even the president and Janet Yellen and everyone else are trying to put confidence into the markets because they know if there is a run on any bank and this spreads, it is game over. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not joking around when I say this, it really would be game over for the banking industry because this one a run on one bank would lead to a run on another bank and the media wouldn't show it anyway because they know they've probably been told whatever happens do not show any bank runs it's like when i covered that video on all the cash that was being withdrawn from banks that wasn't anywhere it wasn't on any media because they don't want a run on the banks it would collapse the banks because their bond portfolio their asset portfolio is in negative territory it's all in the red there's only very few banks that are actually in the green so this is one thing to look out for <clears throat> so i want to just show you before we move on to the uk then i want to just show you this list that i was uh, pretty surprised by actually so we looked at 2023 this is 2020 2019, nothing crazy at all here, as you can see. 2018, there wasn't any. 2017, this was 2016. Okay, we'll keep going down. 2014, hmm, 
quite a lot there. This was 2013. Look how many banks failed. And look at the date on the right hand side as well. Look how many banks failed. And then we get to 2012. You'll notice a pattern here as we're going down. 2011 then. Look at this. This is how many banks failed in a single year. 2010. Look at this. This is staggering. So when I keep hearing people saying, oh, the banking crisis is over, everything's fine, even if more banks go, it's not going to cause a problem. Look at this. This is one single year. If you're not shocked by this, I, I don't know what would shock you. Because that, that was just unbelievable number of, of banks that went. Now, I want to show you a lot of manipulation that I've been noticing as well here. I tried to look at how many UK banks had failed. So moving on to the UK and then we'll go on to Europe next and then we'll finish with Canada. So this was the 10 year of banking failures. In autumn 2008, in the midst of the financial crisis, five financial institutions collapsed, affecting over 4 million bank accounts in the UK. The FSCS, which is the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which covers you in the UK to £85,000, they say uh, played a pivotal role in protecting the customers. Right, so here's what they said that these were the key statistics from this sort of period then. £20 billion in compensation was paid out to these five banks, Bradford and Bingley, Heritable Bank, iSave, and then we got a couple more that are you know, smaller banks here. Okay, so this is what they talked about, and I was trying to get the data, and bearing in mind, this is, you look at the URL here, this is the FSCS, and they're talking about how there hasn't really been many bank failures, there's only been a few. Well, that is just not true, and it's the same with the European Union. They said there's only been a few, they, they, didn't, they didn't even want to give the number, of bank failure. So I got this one, and this is openeconomics.net, which I really like this website because it is open. You can contribute to this. And what it shows is that it's just not true, all of the data from the government departments. So this was from the 2012, here we go, bank tracker here. And it's showing all of the different failures. So we've got here Denmark, there's one here. Uh, another DK, this was UK, Presbyterian Mutual Society, this is a bank failure. We have Chelsea Building Society, a bank failure. Some of these I had never heard of and I had to go on to uh, Google and check them and it's actually correct that a lot of these did fail. I did not know, I did not see some of these in the media. So I had to validate all of this. Um, Netherlands, Italy, Latvia, and look, this is still 2012 here on the right. Lithuania, Greece. This one was not a failure, it didn't collapse because it was bailed out, but they are tracking the failures of banks, which I think is really interesting and really crucial because we need to know if a company or a bank or whoever does fail and gets bailed out because it teaches us a lesson. So there's all of these, it's worth you going on here, it's called openeconomics.net and you can actually go through all of this. Now I want to move on to Canada and honestly the propaganda is on fire. This is another level. So there's all these uh, articles from Canada. Uh, Canada doesn't have bank failures, no bank failures in a hundred years because we've, you know, we're the best and we've learned our lesson. And look, since 2001, look how bad America is. It's endured 562 bank failures. Uh, in Canada, there were zero. So I read this propaganda article and uh, I, I thought it was quite staggering, actually. And, uh, you know, they're just saying how great they are and <laughs> everything else. Uh, the last bank failure was, uh, here it is, 1923. Oh, yes. Okay, well, let's take a look at this then. So bank failures in Canada, uh, a history. On June 4th, 1996, about 2,600 Canadians discovered that their savings were not immediately available 
from their financial institution. Hmm, hmm, you may wonder. They had entrusted a total of $42 million in deposits to Calgary-based Security Home Mortgage Corporation, which had closed its doors for good. The news must have momentarily sent a shiver of fear through each of its clients. Fortunately, this failed financial institution was a member of the CDIC. Yes, the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation. So customers' eligible deposits were protected up to $60,000 per separate issue insured category. Coverage was free and automatic. No one had to apply for it, nor did they have to file a claim. Okay, so what they said is not true then. Hold on, let's have a look at this one. A history of failures from, just in case anyone thinks I'm making this up, this is from the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation. This is their website. Here's a history of failures. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, what is this? Didn't they just say there's not been any, I, and I'm highlighting some because I, I went through and searched them. Didn't they say that they didn't have any bank failures? Canada is on another level, let me tell you, for the, the stuff they put out in the media. And then there was this one, uh, banks rarely fail in Canada, but how much would there, how much would be needed? So again, more, there was a lot of propaganda coming out on this. Um, so we did have, this has dealt with 43 incidents since 1967. Now they have 7.9 billion, which represents 73 basis points of insured deposits. So that's a, a much better coverage ratio than some of the others. And if you're wondering if you're in Canada, you get $100,000 of coverage. But remember, it's got to, you've got to make sure it's not the same parent banking group. If you're in the US, the FDIC will give you $250,000 coverage. <clears throat> Another crucial thing is, now I don't know if you remember the video I did on this guy, where it was their meeting, which I guess they forgot they were being recorded, and the stuff they said was absolutely shocking. If you're in the US, um, it was shocking what they were saying, in that they just didn't have the money to cover the deposits, and they didn't want to talk about it or say anything about it, because it would create a panic, it would create a bank run, and then they would be wiped out and that there was just no money in the you you know in the system and, and everything else it was staggering actually if you remember that video but they say 88 percent of svb's deposits were uninsured <clears throat> and that was as at the end of 2022 and that figure was 90 percent uninsured for signature in these cases u.s officials opted to make all depositors whole declaring systemic risk exceptions in both cases. Here it is, I knew I had it somewhere. So SVB was the second largest bank failure in US history and Signature Bank was the third. And these all happened this year. And it cost the um, fund 20 billion for SVB and 2.5 billion for Signature. Now, <clears throat> where do those losses come from then? Well, they, those losses have gone. The, 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 the account was just wiped out. So now they're going to be doing a special assessment on US banks. And if you recall, we talked about this, the US banks are appealing it. There may be a court case because they do not want to bail out what they feel is not their responsibility to bail out. So there we go. That was a nice... Uh, shorter stream was it no it wasn't a short stream it's still 25 minutes today um, <clears throat> but I hope that sort of gave you a much better overview and insight into the situation right now because again just to summarize here I am seeing a lot of people saying everything's going to collapse all the accounts all this is going to collapse and it's going to happen any day but historically looking at it and again, I'm not saying that couldn't happen. We could see a, a great deleveraging. They happen every couple hundred years. But just looking at this more rationally and more logically, we can now see what has occurred. We can see the sheer level of um, assets that have collapsed compared to just those five 
bank failures in the US. And remember, it is still the US that's having the failures at the moment. A lot of other countries are not. But this could have ripple effects. If this does spread out, you could see ripple effects in other economies. So as always, my advice is the same as it's always been. Diversify your account. Don't just keep all of your money in one account. And even on yesterday's video, I said that you can get 5% interest now. You can get 7% interest on some of these high level savings accounts. So don't do your bank any favor. Don't just leave it in there getting half a percent interest when inflation is running super high in uh, a lot of countries where my subscribers are based. If you're in the UK, definitely don't leave your money just sat there in the bank. Get it into a higher rate savings account because you've got to get above inflation just to stay level. If you're not, then not only are you getting hit by all these price increases, but you're getting hit, your, your cash in the bank is getting hit by this inflation as well. So do what you can, move stuff around. Remember, you can't be in the same parent group Otherwise, your insurance isn't there. Someone said to me, oh, look, I've moved my money, Neil, to three or four different banks. I said, yeah, they're all under the same group umbrella. So you haven't got the coverage across four. You've only got it across one. And remember as well with your business, if you have a business bank account, your coverage is like that. It's almost, it, it's tiny. Some of them are only about 10,000. So you need to check this out as well. Again, top tip that not, a lot of people are not aware of. <clears throat> okay, we will wrap up there. Thanks for being online and I'll see you tomorrow for the walk and talk. Take care. God bless.